Hello everyone. Let's start our today's discussion. I hope you all remember that in previous class we discussed our first past paper question on topic of business trust, and that question's name was Winberry Company. In our today's class, we'll be looking at one more past paper question on business risk topic, and this question's name is Mercurio Company. But before going in detail of this past paper question, let's take a quick review of what we have discussed in this topic. See, evaluation of business risk is part of audit planning activity. So we started this chapter with discussion on audit planning. That audit planning is a mandatory phase of audit activity where an auditor is required to plan an audit engagement first before performing it in detail. During audit planning, auditor performs multiple steps, which start with obtaining understanding about the client's business and its environment. Once the auditor has obtained the understanding about the client's business and its environment, then auditor performs risk assessment on the client that what are the high risk areas which should be specifically focused during the audit activity. Then auditor plans the materiality level, he looks at the deadline of the engagement, he looks at the composition of the team, he obtains understanding about the client's system in business, about its internal controls, about laws, reporting framework, all of these steps are performed in audit planning activity. It is necessary for an auditor to perform audit planning in detail if he wants to make sure that audit activity is performed with sufficient quality. Now during audit planning, two documents are prepared. First is audit strategy, which includes audit planning at overall client level. And another document is audit program in which planning is done at each head level of financial statement. These all issues were discussed in detail in our first class on topic of audit planning. Then we move towards the topic of risk assessment, which is one of the step of audit planning in which an auditor evaluates the risk faced by a client entity. During risk assessment, auditor considers business risk, risk of material misstatement and audit risk. See, risk assessment is very important for an auditor because an auditor is giving a reasonable assurance. And in reasonable assurance, he's not checking everything. He's not giving absolute assurance that he'll check everything. In reasonable assurance, he gives an overall opinion on the financial statement that they give a true and fair view. So for an auditor, it is necessary that he makes sure that he covers all of the high risk areas. Now, since you are giving reasonable assurance, you are not checking everything. So you have to make sure that your focus is on high risk areas specifically. Now, risk assessment topic is examined in our paper for 20 to 25 marks. So it is obviously a very important component of students' preparation that they should be good at performing risk assessment of the client. Now in risk assessment, the first risk which is assessed by an auditor is business risk, where he evaluates the client's business and its environment and picks out the business risk faced by the client entity. See, these business risks will then have certain implications on the financial statement like they can lead to impairment of asset, they can lead to certain provisions, or they can also affect the going concern status of the company. Ultimately, the objective of the auditor is to go to audit risk, but obviously the audit risk is affected by risk of material misstatement, and risk of material misstatement is impacted by the business risk faced by the client entity. Again, I'll say that this whole discussion was done in detail during our first class on this topic. Business risk is any factor which can affect the client's ability to achieve its objective, like it affects the profitability, cash flow, or the going concern status. In order to evaluate the business risk, auditor has to obtain the understanding about the client's business and its environment. In your examination, you will be provided with sufficient information in your question, and you have to evaluate the business risk using the information provided. No background knowledge about any industry will be required. Just look at the question scenario and evaluate the business risk from it. Then we discuss certain example business risk which can arise like technological change, economic recession, natural disaster, new competitor or some price war happening in the market. So these all are the factors which can create risk for a client's business. Then we had discussion on exam focus area that in your examination you can have a requirement on business risk 
of between 8 to 15 marks. Remaining marks of risk assessment will then be included in another requirement which will be either on risk of material misstatement or audit risk. Then we discussed that in exam you will be provided with a scenario from which you will have to evaluate the business risk. You will have to pick up the significant business risk only and here your professional skill of judgment will be very important. So if you remember my approach of teaching, we first discuss the concept, then we look at exam focused discussion, then we look at the drafting technique, that how you have to draft the points in your examination answer. Then if the articles are available, we cover those also. Then we do few past paper questions in class and then I give you few questions as a homework which you have to attempt and send me for my personalized feedback in which I give guidance to each of the student that how they have to improve their drafting. Then we discuss that in each of the business risks you will be evaluated twice, one from technical marks perspective and other from professional skill marks. In technical marks perspective, each business risk worth two marks and you have to follow a three-step approach. Identify, impact, and comment on scale of the risk. So this all discussion was done in our first class on topic of audit planning and then subtopic of business risk. We also drafted some example risk and then we also looked at the examiner article in relation to this topic in which the examiner explained the technique that how you have to draft the topic of business risk. Okay, this article was a very good guidance because it included some example drafting also, like how you have to pick up identification, how you have to write impact, and how you have to comment on scale of the risk. And then in the last class, we drafted a complete answer during our class. We dealt with a question named as Winbury Company. It was a past paper question. We drafted briefing notes. We drafted each of the business risks following our three-step approach of identify, impact, and scale of the risk. Now in our today's class, we'll be discussing one more past paper question, which is Mercurio Company. These are series of past paper sessions on topic of business risk. We'll discuss five questions on topic of business risk during our classes. And then I'll be giving you three questions as a homework, which you have to attempt and send me for marking and feedback. Okay. So let's start this question. I want you all to listen to me carefully. We'll first read this introduction of the question. Then we'll read all the exhibits and the requirement tab. Then we'll discuss the issues which we have to include in our answer. And then at last, we'll draft complete answer during our today's class. See, as I told you in the previous class also, it is very easy for me to just discuss the question and ask you people to draft on your own or just read an examiner answer for you people. But that will never give you a complete idea that how you have to do the drafting. So for that, we draft complete answer during the class. It takes some extra time, but it gives you good guidance that how you have to develop each of the point. Okay, so let's look at it. Your patience and concentration will be very important. It is 1st July 2005. You are an audit manager in Arnett and Company responsible for the audit of Mercurio Company, a listed company with a financial year ending 30th September 2005. So it is just an introduction of the question. Mercurio Company is the country's leading specialist retailer of small domestic pads, pad food and pad accessories, operating 264 stores across the country. The following exhibits available on the left hand side of the screen provide information relevant to the question. So these are just the titles of the exhibit which we'll be reading in detail. Okay, so this is an introduction screen of the question. Normally do not contain much detail. Okay, it just introduces you to the client and the exhibits which you'll be reading. Exhibit one is partner's email. An email which you have received from Tad Hastings, the audit engagement partner. Exhibit two is background information, information in matters relevant to the audit planning. Exhibit three, selected financial information, extracts from Mercurio Company's management accounts, including the results of preliminary analytical procedures, which have been performed by a member of the audit team. And exhibit four is meeting notes, extract from meeting notes taken at a recent meeting with the finance director of Mercurio Company. So this is just a list of exhibits. Obviously, when we'll be reading them in detail, we'll be able to find more information. 
The information should be used to answer the question requirements within your chosen response options. So you have two response option briefing notes, the word processor document in which you have to do typing. And then spreadsheet if you want to do any ratio calculation or any analytical procedures. As we'll graph the answers and as we look at more topics, you will get more clarity that how you have to use these response options. In the business risk topic always, we normally use briefing notes because business risk is more about writing the answer. It is more about simply theoretical narrative rather than performing any detailed calculations. Okay, but as you move forward towards other topics, you will be able to explore that when we have to do detailed calculations, we can do them on the business, this briefing note format, the word processor also, or we can also do it in spreadsheet also. But that all will be explored as we move forward in our course. Okay, so let's look at exhibit number one. I want you all to listen to me carefully. See, since we read the question first, so your patience is very important. Exhibit 1, partner email to audit manager from Ted Hastings, audit engagement partner. Subject audit planning, Mercurio Company, date is 1st July 2005. Now, as you know from the first question of Winberry Company, it is very important that you know the development of the briefing notes format. Because in question number one, you are given with the marks of communication skill. So this entire information is used to make the format of briefing notes. If you remember the question of Winberry Company, we made this format there also. To Olivia Pig, from Audit Manager, okay, the Winberry Company question, and we drafted the introduction also. In this question also, we'll be following the same steps, and it will give you a good practice. Hello. With the year end approaching, I need you to start planning the audit of Mercurio Company. I met with the company's finance director, Kate Flemings, last week to discuss recent developments for the business. I have provided you with a summary of the matters discussed at the meeting, along with some projected financial information. So again, it's just an introduction that a partner is briefing you that what information he has discussed with the finance director. Based on the analysis I have done on this industry, it is appropriate for overall materiality to be based on the company's profit before tax, as this is a key measure for investors and providers of finance. I require you to prepare briefing notes for my use in which you Part A, evaluate the significant business risk faced by Mercurio Company 8 marks. So now this is the requirement which we'll be attempting. 8 marks for business risk. Each of the business risk worth 2 marks. So you have to draft four business risk in this question. Okay. Then part B is on significant risk of material misstatement, which will be the second topic we'll be discussing. And there we'll also be using the concept of materiality. So currently we are ignoring all of this data. We are just looking at the business risk faced by the client entity. Then part C is about discussion on impact of outsourcing the credit control function. Again, we haven't studied this topic yet. When we'll be discussing each of the relevant topic, we'll go back and attempt these re relevant requirements at that time. Okay, so currently our complete focus is on the topic of business risk. And then part B is on principal audit procedures to be performed in respect of holiday pay obligation. So we'll just be looking at this part A, significant business risk faced by Mercurio company. I just referred each of the requirements because we have to refer those in the introduction of the briefing notes. That's why I read all of them. I also know that we were only attempting part A, but we just read all of the requirements because we have to refer them in the introduction of the briefing notes. Okay, so eight marks for business risk. Let's look at it. Now see, if I look at the requirement tab, because I want to give you guidance about the communication skill so we can start development of the format of briefing notes. We have to respond to the instructions in the email from the audit engagement partner. The split of mark allocation is shown in exhibit one. We already saw this, okay? 40 marks for technical knowledge. Professional marks will be awarded for demonstration of skill in communication. See, the communication skill is only checked in question number one. In question two and three, you will not be tested for communication skill. In question two and three, you will have other professional skills of analysis and evaluation, 
professional skepticism and judgment, and commercial acumen. In question number one, you have all four professional skills, and you are awarded 10 marks for it. Now, for communication skill, you have to make the format of the briefing notes. That is very important. In communication skill, there are other things also that you have to give headings, you have to use proper wordings, you have to listen to the examiner instructions carefully, that all is part of communication. In analysis and evaluation, you have to analyze the scenario in detail. If there are any accounting standards involved in like risk of material misstatement, you have to analyze the rules in detail. Evaluation means to relate to the scenario in detail. Then skill of judgment to determine the significant risk. Skill of skepticism, questioning the data. Wherever there are chances of misstatement, you should have the ability to question it. And commercial acumen, the practical perspective, which is most important when we talk about business risk. See, it is not relevant that all of the skill apply in a single requirement. They apply throughout the question. Like when you talk about business risk, commercial acumen skill is most important. Because business risk is about evaluating the client's business from commercial perspective. Okay. So now for the communication skill, let's develop the briefing notes format, which we also did in the question of Winberry Company. I hope that by now you will have much clarity that how you have to develop the format of briefing notes. Okay, let's look at it. Our question name is Mercurio Company. We are developing briefing notes. In question number one of advanced audit and assurance, you will always be drafting the briefing notes. Okay, like it will not be an email or a letter. It will always be a briefing notes. Examiner has made it clear. Now for briefing notes, you will first copy this address details to from subject and date. You paste it here. You adjust the lines. Okay, each head in a separate line. And now, since we are replying, so what we'll do is we will switch the from and to tab. I will cut it, control X, and I will paste it here. And this audit manager will be shifted to from. And in subject, I will add RE for reply. So see what I have done. Since we are responding back, so to audit manager will become from audit manager. From Ted Hastings audit engagement partner will become to Ted Hastings audit engagement partner since we are responding back. And now we'll write an introduction of this briefing notes. Now while write, writing introduction, you have to follow a simple approach. Just refer the name of the company, the year end, and each of the requirement briefly. Okay, don't spend too much time in writing the briefing notes introduction. It has to be very simple. Name of the company, year end, and each of the requirements should be referred briefly. These briefing notes are in relation to audit planning of Mercurio company for the year end date, 30th September 20X5. Now this year end was given in the introduction screen, if you remember. If I close all of the exhibits, here the year end was given. The year end is 30th September 20X5. For the year end is 30th September 2005. Now refer each of the requirement. It includes evaluation of significant business risks to be considered in audit planning of Mercurio company. Okay. See the first requirement was evaluation of business risk. Significant business risk faced by Mercurio Company. This was the party. So we referred it here. It includes evaluation of significant business risk to be considered in audit planning of Mercurio Company. Then look at second requirement. Evaluate and prioritize significant risk of material misstatement which need to be considered in our audit planning. So refer this requirement also. We are not attempting this requirement, but in introduction, we have to refer all of them. Further, it includes evaluation and prioritization of significant risks of material misstatement to be considered in our audit planning. Then, what is the third requirement? Look at it. 
uh, the discuss and conclude on the impact which outsourcing the credit control function will have on our audit planning. See, the impacts of outsourcing will be discussed in later part of the course. But currently, we are just referring each of the requirement in our introduction. Our current topic is business risk. So we'll be doing detailed drafting of that only. Okay. It also includes evaluation of, and we copied it from there, evaluation of control C for copy and control V for pasting, if someone do not know. It also includes evaluation of impact, which outsourcing the credit control function will have on our audit planning. Lastly, it includes, and what's the last requirement? Just pick it up. The principal audit procedures to be performed in respect of the holiday pay obligation. So copy and paste. Principal audit procedures to be performed in respect of the holiday pay obligation. So this is your introduction. And now part A, business risks. Okay. And now we'll start listing down each of the business risks. So if you look at it, see development of this format of briefing note will gain you one easy mark of communication skill, but you shouldn't be wasting too much time in it. Okay. Just pick up the data to from subject and date, reverse to and from since we are replying. Okay. Switch both of the tabs in subject add RE for reply then write an introduction that these briefing notes are in relation to audit planning of Mercurio company for the year ended 13 September 2005. Refer the name of the company, refer the year end, and then refer each of the requirements which you will be answering. First one was business risk to be considered, then evaluation and prioritization of significant risks of material misstatement to be considered in our audit planning, then evaluation of impact which outsourcing the credit control function will have on our audit planning, and lastly the principal audit procedures to be performed in respect of holiday pay obligation. Now let's move towards part A business risk which is an 8 marks requirement so we have to draft 4 risks. Okay, see, as I told you earlier also, it is very easy for me to just read an examiner answer with you. But that will never give you a clarity that how you have to develop the points. When I do drafting with you people in the class, you get clarity that, okay, this is how you have to draft the answer. It takes some extra time, but this effort is worth it. Okay, this entire approach will then be followed by you when you will be dealing with the past paper questions which I'll give you as a homework on which I'll be giving you the feedback. Okay, now let's move towards exhibit number two which is background information. Listen to me carefully while we read this. Mercurio Company is a large listed company established 15 years ago when the founders observed a growth in demand for PAT related products. The company has grown steadily and is now the largest retailer of PAT related products in the country with over 7,000 employees who are mainly staff working in the stores. So he gave us an, a background about the business that they've been operating since 15 years. They are the largest retailer of PAT related products and they have 7,000 employees. Obviously, currently there was no business risk. Read it with patience. Automatically, the business risk will come in front of you. Don't rush. If you will rush, you will start writing the small risk. You have to wait for the significant risk to come to yourself. The examiner will himself discuss it in detail. He will give you an indicator himself. Okay, now. As well as selling pet related products for a wide variety of animals. The stores also sell small animals such as rabbits and fish. Staff members are fully trained to give advice to customers on matters including nutrition and general animal health. And staff members are also trained in handling all types of animals which are sold. Some stores sell more unusual pets such as spiders, snakes and other reptiles and require compliance with specific import restrictions and welfare standards. Now, when I read this paragraph, I feel two business risks included in it. The first one which I highlighted, the welfare standards. When we are keeping animals on our stores, we have to make sure that those animals are kept in a proper environment. And if you remember, we have 264 stores. 
So we have to make sure that we are giving animals the required environment. If they are not kept in a healthy and safe environment, it will lead to impact on our reputation. And it will also lead to a regulatory breach because we have to comply with the welfare standards. And secondly, the staff training because the staff is giving advisory to the customers on the nutrition and general animal health. If the staff gives wrong advice, then it can lead to wrong impact or bad impact on the health of the animals which are kept by the customers and as a result, the reputation will get affected. Further, staff is handling the animals and these animals include spiders, snakes and other reptiles which are obviously the dangerous ones and they can injure the staff or maybe the staff can cause harm to these animals. So the staff need to be very well trained and it need to be make sure that they don't make any error while giving advice to the customers or while handling these specialist type of animals. Okay, so let's look at it. The first business risk which we can refer here, the first risk will be the welfare standard welfare of animals that we have to make sure that the animals which are kept by us are kept in a proper environment they are kept in a proper healthy and safe environment because if the animals are not kept in the proper environment it can lead to breach of the welfare standards and it can also lead to penalties being imposed on us and just think about it we have 264 stores so maintaining that level of control to make sure that all of the stores have the sufficient health and safety environment, it will be a difficult task. And second, staff training. We have to make sure that our staff don't make any error while handling the animals or while giving advice to the customers. Yes, the question is saying that the staff is trained, but obviously there is a risk that staff may make any error while giving advice to the customers in relation to the animal health and their nutrition. And they also need to be very well trained and this need to be make sure that while handling the animals, they don't make any mistake like injuring the animal or injuring themselves. Because maybe while handling the animal, they may injure themselves, they may cause harm to themselves. Because these animals, which include spiders, snakes, and other reptiles, these are unusual type of pets which are being kept. Okay, let's read further. Mercurio company also operate veterinary clinics within most of its stores. See, in veterinary clinics, the animals will be treated when they get ill. So obviously, we'll be hiring the doctors and the vets in relation to these animals. The veterinary clinics are staffed by fully qualified vets who offer a full range of veterinary services. Customers can pay as they go for appointments and treatment of their animals, or they can take out an annual pet healthcare plan which covers the cost of essential vaccination and quarterly health checks. See, whenever there are issues relating to health getting involved, either of animal or human being or anyone, there is always a risk of errors and accidents happening. Because if these vets make any error during treatment of any animal, that can affect our reputation a lot. Because this is one of the highest business risks faced by any business which is dealing with healthcare facility. That they have to think about the errors done by the individuals while dealing with the healthcare issues of animals or even if it is a hospital of human beings, they also face this similar risk of accidents being done by the doctors. And here, obviously, this risk is relating to the vets. Let's read further. The bad healthcare plans are extremely popular as they offer good value for money to the customers. And the annual income from sales of these plans historically account for 10% of the company's revenue. The cost associated with vaccinations and health checks have risen over recent years. However, Mercurio company has not been able to increase the prices due to customers' price sensitivity over the annual packed healthcare plans. Just think about it. Our cost is rising, but we are not able to increase the selling price. This means our profit margins are shrinking. Now just use your mind. Whenever the profit margins are shrinking, the management gets motivated to cut on quality. See, when your cost is increasing, but you are not able to increase the selling price, what will be you, what you'll be doing to survive? What you'll be able to sustain your profit margins? Obviously, you'll cut on quality. Okay, you will be reducing your quality measures. 
And just think about it, these are the veterinary clinics where the animals are treated and they are given with the vaccination. So if we'll be cutting on the quality in this segment, obviously it will lead to more accidents. Okay, so you can write a business risk relating to veterinary services that in this segment, there is obviously a risk that if the company is facing the burden on its profit, they may cut their costs and as a result, the chances of accidents will increase in this segment. Okay, now the company's accounting policy is to recognize the revenue from the sale of healthcare plan on the date when the healthcare plan commences. Obviously, this is an accounting issue that they are following a wrong accounting policy that they are recognizing the entire revenue at the start. But currently, our focus is business risk. So let's look at it specifically. Okay, so veterinary services, uh, the business risk exists that our vets may do an error while dealing with the health of the animal or doing any treatments. And since the cost associated with the plants is increasing and we are not able to increase the selling price, the company will be forced to reduce on their cost and apply the quality and apply the cost reduction measures which can compromise the quality of these services. And since this segment is very sensitive, any reduction in quality will ultimately impact the health of the animals and which will impact the reputation of our business. So see, we are just listing down the business risk currently. We'll do drafting of it when we are done with the reading of the whole question. For the drafting of the points, I always say that first read the entire question because you will find some more comments which you can add in your scale of the risk. When you are commenting on the scale of the risk, you'll find some more points as you completely read the question. Okay, so the first business risk was relating to the welfare standards relating to animal health. We have to make sure that the animals which we are keeping in our stores get a proper healthy and safe environment. Otherwise, it will be a non-compliance with the welfare standard. Then staff training is a critical business risk that if any of our staff is not appropriately trained, they may give wrong advice to the customers or they may do errors while handling the animals and then veterinary services, which are facing the pressure on the cost because of reducing profit margins, okay? The cost associated with this segment is increasing, but the company is not able to increase the selling price, okay? Now let's move towards exhibit number three. I want you all to listen to me carefully. We'll look at each of the risks further in detail when we'll be drafting them, okay? Extracts from the management accounts from Mercurio company, for the year ending 30th September 2005. Okay, now we are provided with the revenue 745 to 803. It has increased, it's good. Operating profit has increased from 110 to 172. Obviously, some of the students may think that, sir, operating profit has increased a lot, so there is a risk of misstatement. Please wait. We are currently dealing with business risk, not with the financial statement risk. We'll be dealing with this when we'll be doing the other requirement of risk of material misstatement when we'll discuss that topic during our classes. Then profit before tax has increased from 56 to 60. Total assets from 957 to 1078. Then there are some assets relating to stores purchased from Lake Wall. Note number one, we'll look at it. Trade receivables have increased from 22 to 42. There are some goods in transit. Cash and cash equivalents have fallen greatly. So it indicates some liquidity issues being faced by the company because cash balances have reduced a lot. Then holiday pay obligation, some liability recorded in the balance sheet. Obviously, it is an accounting issue that holiday pay obligation, that how it is measured and recognized. Number of employees have increased from 6,200 to 7,000. Bank loans have increased a lot from 75 to 251. So obviously it's a business risk. Similarly, the decline in liquidity position is also a business risk and bank loans is also a concern. But when we'll read the notes, the explanatory notes, we'll get further guidance. Current ratio has increased, that is good. But obviously if current ratio exceeds a certain level, we start to argue that maybe there are some obsolete things included in the current asset. That's why the current ratio has increased a lot. But overall increase in current ratio is considered as positive. The gearing has increased from 11% to 31%. Now let's read each of the note. When we'll be reading each of the note, we'll get further clarity of what are the reasons of the movement in each of the head. 
let's look at it. Assets relating to stores purchased from Lake Wall Company. To expand into new locations, 20 stores were purchased from Lake Wall Company, a clothing retailer, on 1st May 2005 at a cost of $171 million. Mercurio Company purchased the stores using their cash reserves. Lake Wall Company was facing going concern problems and offered the stores for sale as part of a restructuring program. So we have purchased 20 stores together. Okay, so now obviously we need to think that whether these stores are of our use or not, whether they are fit for the purpose or not. Let's read further. The stores need to be completely refitted at an estimated cost of $9 million each. So $9 million multiplied by 20 stores. This means $180 million. Just think about it. $9 million multiplied by 20 stores, which means $180 million. And if you look at your cash balance, your cash balance is only at $36 million. Okay, let's read further. Mercurio Company Management has not yet decided how many of the stores will be retained for use in the business. Any which are not retained will be sold. This means that the 20 stores purchased were not evaluated first that which are useful for our business and which are not useful. See, we are not a property dealer that we purchase so many stores. So now, there are two issues in this set. Number one, how will we refit all of the stores? And if there are any stores which are not of our use, there is a risk that they may be sold at a lesser value. It may lead to the loss of the amount which we invested. The stores will be refitted during the period November 2005 to January 2006. How is it possible? Your year end is September 2005 when you have just $36 million in your bank. Okay, which is only sufficient to refit four stores out of these 20. So how is it possible that you will complete the refitting by January 2006? And if you use up your entire of the cash, even then only you can only refit four of the stores. So how will you able to run your business? Your giving has already started to increase this year. So will you go for further loans, what you'll be doing? So apparently company has done this investment without evaluating the complete strategy because the current cash reserves they have are not sufficient to refit all of the stores. Even if they use up their entire cash, they can only refit four of the stores. They purchased 20 stores and they plan that we'll do refitting till January 2006, which is just very near. Your year end is 30th September when you only have 36 million in your bank. And then if there are any excess stores purchased, which will then be sold. So there is obviously a business risk that they may not be sold at the value at which we purchased. We may face loss in that also. So we need to think about the stores purchased from Lake Wall Company because apparently this investment was not very planned. Okay, the company didn't look at its cash flow position that how they will be managing it. Okay, because when you purchase these stores, you need to think about it, that how will you arrange the funds? And apparently the company do not have the sufficient funds to execute this investment plan. Okay, now let's look at note number two, trade receivables. See, when we'll be writing the risk, we'll look at it in more detail at that time also. While the majority of sales are cash, an increasing number of customers have credit accounts with Mercurio Company. The company offers credit customers 60 days credit to pay for the goods. The forecast trade receivables at 30th September 2005 is $42 million. Last year it was $22 million. Almost it has doubled. When your receivables increase by this much ratio, always think about risk of bad debt. Because obviously your receivables are gathering up. Some receivables are those which will not pay. You have to think about the allowances. Your receivable have almost increased by 100% in a single year. So are your sales have increased? If you look at your sales, sales have only increased by a few percentage. Like from 745 to 803 million. I think it's an increase of like 10%. If you can calculate the percentage increase, it's just an increase of 10%. And your receivables, on the other hand, have increased by almost 100% from 22 million to 42 million. So this means that obviously some debtors are gathering, which will ultimately go bad debt.
Okay, so allowance for bad debt is an accounting risk. And obviously the bad debt itself is a business risk because it will then lead to loss of asset. Your profits and assets will be lost because when you'll write off the debts, you'll be suffering the expense in that regard. You'll be suffering the loss in that regard. Due to the growth in sales to the customers on account in December 2005, Mercurio company engaged Fairbank company, a service organization, to provide the credit control function. But whatever they will be doing will be related to the future. But as at today, increase in receivables face a business risk that some of the receivables may go back there, and as a result, the company will face a loss. See, it's a simple argument that receivables during there have increased by around 100%. Whereas the revenue has only increased by 10%. So this clearly means that company is doing more credit sales. The receivables are gathering up. So this creates an exposure of bad debt. And obviously the company also has forecasted this risk. And that's why they have hired an external entity to maintain their credit control function. But if the receivables go bad debt, obviously it's a loss to your profits and your assets. Okay. And then goods in transit. In June 2005, Mercurio company purchased $12 million of packed food supplies from an international supplier with the sales contract stating that ownership of the goods passed to Mercurio company at the date of shipping. So when they ship the goods, when they dispatch the goods, the risk and rewards were transferred to Mercurio company. During transit, the ship carrying the goods was involved in an accident which destroyed the entire supply of goods. Simple loss. Mercurio company directors had arranged insurance on the shipment of the goods and the policy states that 80% of the goods destroyed are covered by insurance. The latest correspondence from the insurance company was an informal email that the claim had been received and was due to be processed. These purchases are made in Mercurio company's operating currency. So obviously loss of goods in transit and if the insurance company do not provide the claim because they have just informally confirmed that they are processing the claim. But obviously there is a risk that loss of goods in transit will be a loss of Mercurio company. And obviously just think about it. If you have faced the loss of the goods in transit, it will also affect your operations here. You will not be able to fulfill the customer orders. Just think that, okay, he said, okay, we have suffered a $12 million loss. Then what about the inventory which we had to receive and we had to sell it to the customers? Now, obviously, our ability to fulfill the customer orders will be affected. And when you will be not able to fulfill the customer orders, the customers may switch to alternative vendors. It is not just about the loss which you have faced. It is about the operational difficulties which will be arising after it. And that note number four, holiday pay obligation. Mercurio company has an internal audit department who have been testing the controls in the company's payroll system. Internal audit procedures have revealed that some employees are duplicated on the payroll system. This seems to have happened when two different systems used for recording full-time and part-time staff were merged in October 2004. See, if there are duplications in the payroll system, automatically the salaries will get paid twice. It will create a loss for the company. Just think about it. If you have duplicated number of staff, you'll be paying some of the staff twice. Okay. Additionally, the internal audit team procedures have found that while the systems have the capability of recording holidays taken by the staff, this is not always used. And manual records are also maintained in relation to holiday entitlement. See, whenever there are manual records, there is always a chance of manipulation. Employees are entitled to carry forward a maximum of three days of unused holiday entitlement to the next year. Management estimates a holiday pay obligation relating to unused holiday entitlement at the year end using previous year obligation and adjusting it for the pay rises and changes in staff level. The holiday pay obligation forecast for 30th September 2005 is $21.1 million. Last year it was $11.6 million. So see, the measurement of this amount is an accounting risk that the accounts may be misstated that it has increased by this much percentage. But if I talk from the business risk perspective, duplications in the payroll, weak controls, manual recording, this all will ultimately lead to the frauds in the entity and this will create a financial loss to the Mercurio company. 
So from the business risk perspective, obviously the weak controls will lead to wrong payroll being executed, wrong holiday pay obligation being paid, so excess holidays being granted to the staff because they are recording manual holidays. So what will be what they will be doing is like. Uh, they took a holiday, they don't record it manually. The system may not be working appropriately, there will be mismatches, and ultimately, staff will be taking excess offs. What will be happening is that staff will be getting greater amount for their unused holidays. Duplicated payroll means double salaries getting paid, double benefits being allotted. So there is a risk of some fraud being going on in the payroll head. So obviously this is not good and it will affect the business of the Mercurio company because ultimately it will lead to excess cash being paid. Now, if we move forward towards the last exhibit, Exhibit 4, Meeting Note. Notes from the meeting with Kate Fleming, Mercurio company's finance director. This year has been a significant business development for the company. The company has started to sell the products under its own brand, introducing the Mercurio range of premium packed food and accessories. The products are manufactured in another country and imported, and purchases of Mercurio brand goods from foreign suppliers are projected to be $7 million for the year 30th September 2005. The range was introduced for the sale in June 2005 and was heavily promoted. Having been only recently introduced, sales of the products from Mercurio range will be insignificant in the year's financial statement. However, projections in the management accounts indicate that Mercurio company is expected to account for 30% of the revenue in the financial year to 30th September 2006. So we have launched our own brand name. So obviously when you launch something new, there is a business risk that it may not be as successful. And if I talk about this brand specifically, it is dependent on imports. When you are dependent on imports, obviously there is a risk of adverse exchange rate movement, delays in delivery from the overseas country. You also face risk relating to import laws that if some import duties get imposed on it. During the financial year, Mercurio company took an additional bank loan to aid with cash flows for the new Mercurio brand promotion and forthcoming refittings of the stores purchased from Lake Wall company. So that increase in gearing, if you remember, that increase in gearing from 11% to 31% is now explained. This increase in loans from 75 to 251 is now explained that this was for this new brand and for the stores which you purchase. Just think about it, that whenever you do something on the basis of loan, there is always a concern that if the things are not as successful as you planned, the fixed interest cost burden will always create pressure on the directors. Their focus will get diverted. They will not be able to focus on their existing operations. And if I talk about the refitting of the stores for which you already took the loans and still you only have $36 million cash in hand, which is only sufficient to refit four stores and you purchased 20 stores. So on what basis you did that planning? And obviously doing these two things in parallel, refitting of stores, which is a drainage. If we refit all 20 stores, it's a drainage of $180 million. And then this brand in parallel, which require heavy promotion and it is import dependent. Obviously, it's a concern for Mercurio company business. So new brand of Mercurio company, which obviously faces risk in relation to being financed on the basis of bank loan and it is being import dependent. So if I look at the business risk, how many risks we have found? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And we only have to write four from these. We have found eight risks and we only have to draw four from these. First one, staff training, uh, the welfare of animals. Now, what do you mean by welfare of animals? Since we are keeping the animals at stores for sale, we have to think that the animals are provided with a proper, healthy, and safe environment. And we have to make sure we comply with the welfare standards. Then staff training, you are giving advice to the customers and handling the animals. Then veterinary services, which is facing the pressure since the cost is increasing and we are not able to increase the selling price. Then stores purchased from Lake Wall Company without proper plan of refitting. Increase in receivable by too much extent increases the risk of bad debts being happening. 
then loss of goods in transit if the insurance company do not pay for that and most importantly the operational difficulty which will arise since we will not be able to fulfill the customer orders then weak controls in the payroll which resulted in duplication of the payroll staff and manual recording of holidays a new brand of Mercurio company, which obviously faced risk due to cash flow issues. It faces risk due to import issues that we are importing the goods from other country. And obviously, whenever something is new, we always face problems at the startup time. So now let's draft four business risks because we have to gain eight marks. The examiner says you can draft any four of them. So we'll draft the first four ones and we'll complete our answer. Okay, I've obviously discussed all of the risks that what you can include in them, but we'll be drafting only four and we'll be following the approach which we discussed. And you all know our approach, identify, impact, and comment on scale of the risk. So let's start drafting with the first risk, welfare of animals. Okay, we'll rediscuss each of the risk, we'll evaluate them again, and then we'll draft them. Now, the first risk was welfare of animals here, where it was restated that we have to make sure that we comply with specific import restrictions and the welfare standards. If we are importing the animals from other country, we have to look at the import restrictions also, and we have to make sure the welfare standard, the animals which are being kept at the store. So let's first identify the risk. So Mercurio company business faces a risk in relation to the welfare of the animals which are being kept at the stores for sale. First, identify the risk. Then think about the impact. If the animals are not provided with a proper welfare environment, it will lead to breach of regulations which can lead to fines and it can also lead to adverse impact on your reputation. Then think about the scale of the risk. Just think about the abnormal animals which you are keeping. For them, you have to make sure that you have a proper environment. And think about 264 stores which you have. When you have so many stores, it is very difficult to maintain the quality standards in all of them. Okay. So let's first identify the risk. Just follow the three-step approach. Okay. Mercurio company's business faces a risk in relation to welfare environment being provided to animals kept at its stores for sale. It faces a risk in relation to the welfare environment that if we are not able to provide the good health and safety environment, it will lead to fines and obviously it will lead to bad impact on the reputation of the business. So first you identify the risk. Now let's think about the impact. If stores of Mercurio company do not provide healthy and safe environment for animals kept in its stores for sale, then it will lead to breach of welfare standards and as a result, penalties may arise. Further, it will also lead to bad impact on its reputation as customers may not be willing to deal with Mercurio company if they found about any ill treatment of animals in stores. Okay, so First, you identify the risk, then you discuss the impact. See, understand the approach. As I stated earlier also, that when I draft the answer with you people, you have to take maximum benefit of it. First, you identify the risk. That risk is in relation to the welfare environment of the animals being kept at the stores. Then think about the impact. The impact is the penalties being imposed if the welfare standards are not complied with. And second, the impact on the reputation if the customers found about any ill treatment of the animals. Okay, now let's talk about the scale of the risk, that why this risk is higher. What are the concerns in relation to this risk? So you can refer about the unusual animals which you are keeping, because for them, you have to make sure that you have a specific environment and think about 264 stores which you are managing. Because when you have so many stores, it is very difficult to maintain the quality environment. 
Okay? This concern is specifically high in relation to unusual animals kept at some of the stores of Mercurio Company, which include spiders, snakes, and other reptiles, as these animals may require specific environment to be kept. Because obviously you cannot keep these animals with other ones, okay? They can harm other animals. And further, as Mercurio Company has 264 stores, therefore risk of managing healthy and safe environment is very high because ensuring quality at so many stores is difficult okay so it is very difficult to manage quality at 264 stores if it would be like one or two store we can say that okay they can maintain a good environment but when you have 264 stores how will you manage a proper environment in all of them you need to have very good quality measures and very good monitoring and supervision just think about it see it is not important that you refer your practical knowledge but just think about your reasonable knowledge that when you go to a market to buy animals what you practically see is that they are not kept in a proper environment by these stores but when you talk about a brand like Mercurio Company who's managing 264 stores, they are not a small retailer. They have a very big reputation to manage. So they have to make sure that all of those stores have a proper standard because otherwise it will immediately come into the notice of media or it will come notified into the public knowledge and it will affect the reputation a lot. Obviously, you are not required to refer this practical knowledge because the examiner has made it clear that you just need to focus on the question scenario. But whenever you are keeping animals, you are selling it throughout your stores, you have to make sure that proper health and safe environment is implemented. And when you have 264 stores, obviously, this risk is very high. So if you look at the drafting approach, First, we did identification of the risk, that risk is in relation to the welfare environment being provided, that we may not be able to maintain that. Then the impact that if we are not providing the good environment, then it can lead to penalties and bad reputation on our business. Okay, the impact of reputation will be a very big concern because we have too many stores. And this risk is specifically high when we talk about the unusual animals we are keeping and since we have 264 stores, so it is very important that we maintain quality standard through all of them, and it is difficult, okay? So let's look at another risk, staff training. We picked up this risk from here when it was stated that um, the staff members are fully trained to give advice to customers on matters including nutrition and general animal health. And staff members are also trained in handling all types of animals. And since we have 7,000 employees working in these stores, so obviously there is a risk that if any error is done by any of the staff or if any staff member is not sufficiently trained, he may make an error while giving advice to the customers or while handling the animals. Okay, so now, if any of the staff, if any of the staff of Mercurio Company, first you identify the risk, is not sufficiently trained then is not sufficiently trained then an accident may happen may happen in relation to handling animals or while giving or while giving negligent advice to customers okay so first you identify the risk that the risk is that if any of the staff member is not sufficiently trained then an accident may happen in hand, relation to handling of animals or while giving negligent advice to customers, okay? That they may give wrong advice to the customers or they may make an accident while handling the animals. So this is the risk. Let's talk about in fact that what will happen. If any of the staff, if any of the staff giving advice to customers on general animal health, and nutrition gives 
negligent advice, then it may lead to impact on reputation of Mercurio company as customers will lose trust on Mercurio company business. Okay, they will no more trust. And obviously, from wherever you are taking the animal, you take advice from that. Okay, that what we should be giving to this animal, how we should be making sure that the animal has good health. So, if any of the customer give wrong advice, obviously, this will increase the risk. But just think about a pharmacy where you purchase a medicine, you take an advice from the pharmacy man that okay, how I have to use it. And if he gives you a wrong advice, obviously, you will not be willing to go there anymore. Your trust will be affected. Okay, further, if staff makes any error in handling of animals, they may injure themselves, themselves or injured the animals they are dealing with. Okay, this risk is very high when dealing with unusual animals kept at some of the stores of Mercurio company. Okay, so the unusual animals was also increasing the risk in relation to the welfare standards and it was also increasing the risk in relation to staff handling. Because when you talk about dealing with the handling of these unusual animals, the staff will require specific training. Okay, considering, considering that Mercurio company has 7,000 staff members working the, in these stores, working in these stores, management of staff training will be a concern, will be a concern for Mercurio Company's business, okay? Because when you talk about managing 7,000 people, it is obviously a greater risk. So if you look at this risk, see, if you look at the drafting, See, don't read the whole risk together. Just look at the drafting approach. First, we identify the risk that if any of the staff of Mercurio company is not sufficiently trained, then an accident may happen in relation to handling of animals or while giving negligent advice to customers. Identify. Then think about the impact. If any of the staff giving advice to customers or general animal health and nutrition gives negligent advice, then it may lead to impact on reputation of Mercurio Company as customers will lose trust on Mercurio Company's business. Further, if staff makes an error in handling of animals, they may injure themselves or animals they are dealing with. Okay, the impact and scale of the risk. This risk is very high when dealing with unusual animals kept at some of the stores of Mercurio company because you require specialist technique to handle those animals. Considering that Mercurio company has 7,000 staff members working in these stores, management of staff will be a concern for Mercurio company's business. Okay, I hope that you people are understanding it. So we are drafting each of the risks following our same approach, identify, impact and scale of the risk. Welfare of the animals, identify. Risk in relation to providing a health and safety environment to the animals. Impact, penalty, and reputation. Scale of the risk, unusual animals and 264 stores. Staff training, identify. If the staff is inadequately trained, it may lead to accidents and wrong advice. Impact, wrong advice, it will impact reputation. Staff handling the animals, risk of accident, injuring themselves. Scale of the risk. Unusual animals will require specialist training. And when you have 7,000 staff members, obviously giving training to them is a big concern. Just follow the approach and all the risk will go in a simple way. Don't look at six lines together. Break it. Okay, it's identify. It's impact. It's scale of the risk. As we practice more and more questions, you will get more clarity on the approach of writing it. Let's look at one more risk, veterinary services. See, the veterinary services offered by Mercurio Company obviously pays a risk that if any of the VAT provides wrong treatment to the animals which they are brought to them because they have to give treatment to the animals and offer the vaccination. So obviously there is a risk that the veterinary services segment pays a risk that if any of the VAT provide wrong treatment, then it can lead to adverse impact on the reputation. 
obviously it can be lead to legal issues also because obviously if wrong treatment is offered or some wrong treatment is done to any animal the customer can file a litigation also okay so obviously it has a risk for reputation and the legal risk also and this concern is very high because this segment is currently under pressure because the cost associated is rising but we are not able to increase the selling prices so obviously it will lead to the company cutting on its quality and cutting on its cost to manage its profit margins okay so veterinary services let's look at the risk relating to it okay veterinary services segment segment of mercurio company faces a risk relating to negligent treatment being done by any of the vat employed by mercurio company while treating animals of customers okay because customers bring their animals for vaccination and treatment so obviously it has an inherent risk see always remember whenever you are talking about healthcare services there is an inherent risk that if any of the staff is negligent in treating them, there will obviously be a risk to your reputation. Okay. Now, what will happen if any of the vet is negligent in his treatment? Okay. It can lead to reputational issues and also legal implications if any of the vet is negligent in treating animal of any customer or part of any customer, which would be a better word because the question referred the word part, but if you use the word animal also, that is acceptable. If any of the VAT is negligent in treating part of any customer, because that customer can file, can file legal case against Mercurio company in relation to it. Okay, always remember, if you are dealing with healthcare services, this risk always exists. Okay, now this risk, of negligence in veterinary services segment is high as this segment is facing pressure on profit margins as cost associated with vaccinations and health checkups of pets is increasing but Mercurio company is not able to increase the selling price. Increase the selling price. Pressure on profit margins. On profit margins will ultimately lead. Will ultimately lead to cost cutting measures. Being taken by management which will impact the quality in this segment, in this segment. This may result in greater accidents. This may result in greater accidents happening in veterinary services often. Okay. So let me repeat it again. See, while you are drafting the risk, obviously you have to draft it with care. You pick up each of the point, you develop it, okay? So now how you have done drafting of it? Veterinary services segment of Mercurio company faces a risk relating to negligent treatment being done by any of the VAT employed by Mercurio company while treating animals of customers. So obviously this is identification that if any of the VAT do negligent treatment, it will lead to an accident and obviously it will lead to reputational loss. It can lead to reputation issues and also legal implica implications if any of the VAT is treating, is negligent in treating part of any customer because that customer can file a legal case against Mercurio company in relation to it. So obviously if this will happen, you'll face a legal case. Now let's think about the scale of the risk. This risk is particularly important now because the segment is facing pressure on profit margins. This risk of negligence in veterinary services segment is high as this segment is facing pressure 
on profit margin. As cost associated with vaccinations and health checkups of PAT is increasing, but Mercurio company is not able to increase selling price. Due to customer price sensitivity, it was written in the question. Pressure on profit margins will ultimately lead to cost-cutting measures being taken by management, which will impact the quality in this segment. This will result in greater accidents happening in veterinary services offered. So if you just look at the drafting approach, it's very easy. Don't look at the entire risk, look at the steps. Okay, this was identification, this was impact, this was comment on the scale. When you look at the steps, obviously drafting gets easy. I hope that you people are understanding it, okay? See, I'll say it again. It is very easy to just read an examiner answer. Or when you read, you say, okay, I can write this. But you will never be able to do it on your own until and unless you draft it. So just look at it, how I'm developing the point, how you pick up the point, how you convert it into a complete risk. Because otherwise, what you will be doing in the exam is that you will be just repeating the facts given in the question. And we read the examiner article that repeating the facts in the question will gain no marks. So while writing the risk, follow the approach. Identify, impact, and comment on scale of the risk. Is it clear? Let's draft this last risk for this question because it was an eight marks question and we had to draft four risks in it. Stores purchased from Lake Wall Company. So we purchased stores worth $171 million from Lake Wall Company, and these were the 20 stores which we purchased. For each store, we require $9 million for refitting, and we don't have sufficient cash reserves. We have already taken significant loans during the year. So maybe the bank is not willing to give you immediate loans again. And one more thing, we didn't evaluate that which stores we'll be using in our business and which we'll be selling. Because while selling the stores, maybe we are not able to sell them at good prices because maybe those stores are not in the good location. So let's try this risk. First, we'll identify the risk. What is the risk in stores purchased from Lake Wall Company? So there is a risk that Mercurio Company will not be able to gain benefit of this investment in relation to the stores it purchased Reason being that it do not have sufficient funds to do refitting of at least half of them. It has very less funds. Okay. Investment done by Mercurio Company. By Mercurio Company. In stores purchased from Lake Wall Company. From Lake Wall Company may not be able to generate good returns. Considering low cash balances to refit them for business and further they were purchased without proper evaluation that which will be used in Mercurio Company's business. Okay, so we did a bit detailed identification that investment done by Mercurio Company in stores purchased from Lake Wall Company may not be able to generate good returns, considering low cash balance to refit them for business. You only have $36 million, which is only sufficient to refit four of them, even if we use up the entire of the cash. Okay, Obviously, we cannot use the entire of the cash. We have to require it for our normal business also. And further, they were purchased without proper evaluation that which will be used in Mercurio Company's business. Now, let's think on the impact. Let's go in detail. Now, even if Mercurio Company will use its entire cash balance, it will only be able, it will only be able to refit four of the 20 stores purchased by it. This means that majority of the stores purchased will not be used in it in Mercurio Company's business currently. Okay? Further, further, management has not yet evaluated has not yet evaluated that which of the stores will be used in Mercurio Company's business. 
which means that there may be that there may be most of the stores not viable for mercurial company's business and they will require reselling and they will require reselling while reselling them mercurial company may not be able to generate sufficient returns okay so you explain the impact in detail because this was one of the risks which was carrying two issues together one was the liquidity issue to refit them entirely and other one was that we didn't evaluate the stores well while we were purchasing them okay now concern on liquidity concern on liquidity of mercurio company is already high is already high considering increase in gearing during the year during the year already from 11 percent to 31 percent and launch of its own brand in parallel this will further affect mercurio company's ability to perform refitting of required stores okay so let's look at the development of the point obviously you may feel that sir we will not be able to draft it in such a good manner in starting so i'll say that don't rush it's just a second question it's just the start of the course as we do more and more practice as we do more and more questions you will get more control and your drafting will improve and obviously i'm here to give you feedback on your answers when you submit your answers i'll guide you more i'll give you guidance that okay improve here and with passage of time your answers will improve okay let's look at the drafting which i done investment done by mercurial company in stores purchased from lake wall company may not be able to generate good returns considering low cash balance to refit them for business and further they were purchased without proper evaluation that which will be used in mercurial company's business because till now also they are not decided that which of the stores will be retained for use in the business and which will be sold. Okay. Now, let's talk about the impact. Even if Mercurio company will use its entire cash balance, it will only be able to refit four of the 20 stores because it has just nine, $36 million in bank, $9 million for one store. So for four stores, you will end up your entire $36 million balance. This means that majority of the stores purchased will not be used in Mercurio company's business currently. And since this entire project is being done through the loan, we read in the exhibit O, so obviously this will be a concern. The bank interest cost will be creating pressure on the directors. Further management has not yet evaluated that which of the stores will be used in the Mercurio company business, which means that there may be maybe most of the stores not viable for Mercurio business, and will require reselling. Like for example, from 20, they say, okay, 10 are useful and 10 are not. So you have to go for reselling. And do remember, you are not a property dealer that reselling will be easy for you. While reselling them, Mercurio company may not be able to generate sufficient returns. Concern on liquidity of Mercurio company is already high considering increase in gearing during the year already from 11% to 31% and launch of its own brand in parallel. So that is already creating concern on your cash flow. This will further affect Mercurio company's ability to perform refitting of required stores. So you commented on scale of the risk also that, okay, due to this, the liquidity concern is already high. So if you look at it, we have done drafting of four risks, welfare of the animals, staff training, veterinary services, and stores purchased from Lake Wall. There are other risks also like increase in receivable from 22 million to 42 million. You can draft a good point here that increase in receivable creates a risk of bad debt and maybe the company selling the goods to the customers who have already reached their credit limit. Sales have only increased by 10% and receivables are increasing by 100%. So obviously there is a risk that some bad debts are being created. So you can draft a good risk here also. Then loss of goods in transit that the goods which are being shipped as the ownership transferred to us when they were shipped. So there is a risk 
that but the risk is that the insurance company may not give us the compensation because the entire consignment has got destroyed during transit the accident has already happened now the risk is that the insurance company may not accept our claim because it was just received that they have received an informal email and they are said that we are processing but maybe they will not accept our claim and even if the insurance company pays us for these goods the operational difficulty which you will be facing is a concern because you will not be able to fulfill your customer orders since you don't have the raw material so your customers may switch to other competitors then weak controls in payroll duplication manual recording of holidays so that obviously creates a risk of fraud which may happen a new brand of mercurio company which is import dependent and the already liquidity issues the company is facing already the gearing has increased they have already spent a lot of money in purchasing the stores of lake wall so they may not be able to spend on marketing sufficiently of this new brand so obviously this new brand which is which was financed through the bank loan it will create a concern for mercurio company if you read it here during the mercurio company took an additional bank loan to aid the cash flows for the new mercurio brand promotion so already the cash flows are declining you have already spent a lot on the stores from lake wall and you need more fund also for that so obviously this new brand may not be successful in initial years and most importantly its import dependency exposes it to foreign currency risks exposes it to the delay which will be happening in importing the goods and just you faced an accident where your goods in transit were damaged so these all risks will also be created in relation to this new brand of mercurio company but since we have grafted the four of the risk it's not required to write all of them you have to write any four which we just did okay now as far as the practice is concerned we'll do five questions we are just done with two i hope that by now you are getting clarity that how you have to deal with the past papers but as we practice more you will gain more knowledge and more strength on dealing with the past papers and then obviously you will be doing three homework questions and send me for marking and feedback which will be very important okay so if we look at it the question name mercurio company we are dealing with briefing notes to from subject date we picked up from the partner email we just switch the to and from tab in subject we had re for reply we drafted an introduction and then we looked at each of the business risks approach is identify impact and comment on the scale one thing if there are slight spelling errors there is nothing to worry the examiner do not deduct marks for it the examiner says that your spelling should be sufficient enough that i understand that what you are trying to say okay so small errors are ignorable so don't worry about it then welfare of the animal we face a risk that we may not be able to provide a good environment to the animals it may lead to regulatory issues fines and impact on the reputation the concern is high as we have 264 stores to manage then staff training giving advice to the customers and handling the animals there is a risk that any of the staff is inadequately trained and he may lead to an accident obviously dealing with 7000 staff members this risk of training is high then veterinary services this segment is facing pressure on its profit margins due to increasing cost and inability to increase the selling price so maybe the management will cut on the cost and that will compromise the quality and then the accidents will happen since it's a health related segment and stores purchased from lake wall without appropriate planning we don't have sufficient funds to refit them and we didn't evaluate the stores also while purchasing them so i hope that you are understanding that how you have to draft the answers but still if you have any query any question feel free to contact me on my whatsapp okay i am always available to respond to you you all have my direct whatsapp number to contact me okay in the next class we'll look at one more past paper question and this will continue on we'll do five questions in total on the topic of business risk and then i'll give you three questions as a homework which you have to attempt on your own and send me for my personalized feedback I hope that you have understood everything if you have any query feel free to contact me thank you everyone